100 dice. Ruby on Rails 7 is out. Code along on a guided journey through the Rails 7 Getting Started Guide and beyond with test-driven development. There has never been a better time to learn Ruby on Rails. Hit the ground running with the newest version. Go to statelesscode.com slash getting started with Rails 7 to level up. Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is the first video in a new series called nerddice.com where we'll be starting a new Ruby on Rails project and uh, carrying it about as far as we'll go. So uh, this is the first Rails 7 project that I'm actually undertaking. I had, you can check out my other series where I take go through the Rails 7 getting started guide uh, and then afterwards do some stuff with action text and stimulus and a couple other things. So if you are brand, brand new to Ruby on Rails, I recommend checking out that video series first. I'm going to go through this in a real life agile project type of format where I have a bunch of things that I want to see in this website. I'm the primary uh, stakeholder. So this is subjectively for me as a uh, tabletop role-playing game master seeing what things um, help me out the most. And so I'm going to be kind of the primary, at least to, until this thing goes live, uh, stakeholder and um, voice of the customer for my own project. And I'd recommend doing that if you are starting out with something, program what you know. So I'm, I'm a giant nerd. I've uh, You can check out, I've made a Ruby gem called Nerd Dice that goes through uh, and uh, how to roll, roll polyhedral dice and has all kinds of stuff like uh, Ruby metaprogramming and other stuff if you're just into pure Ruby or interested in um, random number generation or anything like that. I recommend that video series, but uh, we're going to kind of go through, well, in this ep episode, we'll uh, generate our project, generate our GitHub repo, and start populating some of our uh, some of our user stories and things that we want to see for features. Uh, I'm going to go through uh, probably some of the first things that I do in any Ruby on Rails project, set up some GitHub actions and automation, code coverage, uh, RuboCop, those sorts of things. And then I will uh, work on implementing a the ability for users to sign up, log in, log out, which I'll be using uh, a, a common Ruby authentication gem called Devise4. We'll talk about some of the the trade-offs and considerations that you use when uh, choosing which Ruby gems and plugins to use. And I'm going to try to keep this as uh, simple and Rails 7 uh, idiomatic as possible. So I'm going to try to exclusively use uh, Hotwire, the Hotwire stack with uh, Stimulus and Turbo and those things for as much as I possibly can for this project. I'm going to use uh, Tailwind CSS for my uh, my front end styling framework. I'll probably also import in animate.css later on, but I'm going to try to keep the the, the front end things uh, fairly uh, minimal and modest using stimulus. So even the the Tailwind and animate stuff that we'll do will create front end stimulus JavaScript controllers and and try to reuse those patterns. Um, and model it using the the Rails 7 kind of default stack. I'm not going to have uh, any sort of a um, yarn or anything like that installed in this project. I'm going to use the, the import maps uh, for these things. So uh, without that introductory information out of the way, let's get started. So I'm going to go first to GitHub, and you can do this in either order. Uh, either make your repo first. I'm going to make it a blank repo, but uh, on your um, on GitHub, and then I will go into the command line and create our Ruby project, and then set the origin on it and do our initial push and everything. So what we'll do here is um, I'm on my stateless code uh, org here and repositories. I'm going to click new here. And we're going to call this repository nerddice.com, all underscored. Um, 
I will. So my transcoder died on me. Uh, so I'm back here. So I've created a description here. We're going to make sure that the repository is public. And then we are not going to initialize it with anything here. None, none, none. And we'll click on create the repository. Copy our item here. So we'll just leave this page open while we go now in and uh, we're going to now go. So this is September 2022 when I'm doing this, and the current version of Rails is 7.0.3.1 and we're, we're going to use that. So while I'm doing this, I'm going to, um, so make sure that I'm up to date here. We're using Ruby 3.1. So uh, now we're going to generate our project. We're gonna use the same um, title as we, as, repo name that we did here. So we're going to use here Rails new and then the name of our app nerddice.com. Our database we're going to use for this project is Postgres. And then our CSS framework is going to be Tailwind. Uh, everything else will just leave the same as the rail 7 defaults and we'll let this install creating everything. Now if we, uh, we're going to cd into this directory. Take a look at our tree. All right. Or we'll just open this up with should be no commits and that's what we've got here and then um, I'm gonna just open this app with VS code we'll take a look at our generated directories and everything here so uh, we can see that we've got a a readme generated, we've got our, our git ignore, git attributes, uh, things like that. You can see that by default in our gem file, since we um, went with P Postgres, uh, the PG gem shows up here, the um, Tailwind CSS gem shows up here, and you can see this is otherwise the, um, the vanilla Rails new uh, usage here and we've got um, kind of the source and the git source just everything automatically generated here so what we'll do now is we will um, make sure that we can get to our um, hello world splash screen here so um, we'll I'm going to use since we're using Tailwind here instead of using I can I'll do it first to try it out um, Rails S we can go on to our local host here oh and we don't have a database yet so we'll do that 
this is if you've got um, if you're using SQLite 3 I, I, you don't run into this right away when you're doing a new Rails app but we'll execute that command here to create our database you can see that we've got our development and test databases created now try our refresh with our server running. And yay, we're on Rails. So now I will um, abort this server process, control C here. And I'm, instead of doing Rails S, if you do bin dev here, it will start your development environment and it will do things like building your CSS and uh, watching for changes in those things as you're developing. So that's kind of what we'll wind up using locally as our development server as we get going here. So everything looks okay from that regard. The other thing, no, I think I'll just, so we'll, we'll shut down the server do a git status here and we'll um, add our current directory so um, and then in my nerd dice series I, I went with our spec as the uh, the test framework for that gem I'm especially with rails more comfortable using mini test which is the default here I'm just gonna stick with it and uh, use that for our um, for our project here. So we've got our items added here. I'm going to do now a git commit and this will pull up our commit editor window. I'll pause and all right so OBS has been very unkind to me. So when I paused, I was attempting to write a commit message for my first commit and uh, it didn't unpause. And so I lost a bunch of um, screencasting and, and stuff like that. Some of these things can only be done uh, once and I can't re redo them truly. So we're gonna just kind of re go through the steps that occurred here. So I was writing my commit message. If we do a git log here, you can see that I uh, added at the bottom here, add sublime, add unlicensed to the project, which wasn't there in our staging area when we did the git commit. So what I did to solve for that was I did a copy. I've got the nerd dice project. So the unlicensed.txt here, we'll go back to nerddice.com. Did this, hit enter. And then I did git add unlicensed.txt. And then finally did a did git commit amend, no edit, date equals now, and I um, had that. That's what produced this commit that's available in the log here. So the next thing I did was, um, and it was much easy, easier to do with the, um, the initial repo page here, but you can still access it via here. So I took the HTTPS version of the item here and did a git remote add origin and then 
um, match that to my GitHub, and then finally a git push dash u to set it up stream origin and the name of our automatically generated uh, branch here is main. So that got us to where we are now on GitHub with the commit that we had, our initial commit showing here. It's showing it's verified and it has our unlicensed and it's only got the one commit. So the um, git commit amend there, um, helping to add that in. Now, the other thing I did was I went in and added a project. So you can see here, it's now associated with um, the project, with the repo, with uh, kind of this quick access to it. Uh, when initially doing this, you go in and there isn't anything showing here and you have to go to go to stateless code organization, create a new project. So I'll click on this to simulate what we're doing here. So we're at the stateless code organization. I hit new project and this actually creates a project rather than just doing a new project. So uh, start from scratch. I chose board here and I hit create. You can see it uh, creates this as untitled project. Um, so if I go back to my, my projects now, I've got this untitled project that we have associated here. And um, I'm just going to uh, close this project. And now it's no longer showing as existing. The other thing I did with the nerddice.com here is if you go into settings, this initially starts as a private project. So I went in uh, the project name. I haven't added a description yet. And then you can take the, um, the visibility here and it was private. I, in the drop down, I went and changed it to public and that uh, saved the status of the project. Now, if we go back to projects and click on the project, you've got the board view here. You can go in and choose add item and it will um, type to add a, a draft issue or use something to search. So that's what we've got right now are a bunch of draft issues. Project needs RuboCop installed and configured. Project needs coverall set up. Project needs code climate set up and project needs GitHub actions set up. And obviously there's a ton of stuff that we're gonna wind up putting on this backlog. I'll probably populate some of this just offline and then we'll talk through it as we add new things to it. Um, I'll, we'll, we'll take one of these, convert it into an issue and start working on it in our next video. And then we'll go from there. The other thing that you need to do when dealing with the project. So let's go back to our um, to our org here, go to our repo. So you can see the projects here showing as one and you've got access to this. Once you go and create that project, you now need to, um, it doesn't automatically associate it with a particular repo. So you need to go into this add project dialog here and click on your project that you created and now it will be associated. So if you go to code and then over to projects, this is the, uh, the new GitHub project style that you've got here. We can go into nerddice.com. We can talk about the uh, different things. We can move things into progress and etc. cetera, convert. Um, like if I go into this issue here, I can hit the convert into issue button. Let's do that and kind of see um, what happens and you can choose the uh, repository here and we've got um, the issue number one. So I think it, it um, go to open in a new tab, you can see that the issue is created. There's no description provided unless you go in and provide it. So I'll go and do that. We'll flush it out. We'll take a look at the, um, at starting to do this on our next video and see you in the next one. Want to create your own Ruby gem, but don't know where to start? 
code along with me on the end-to-end -end journey of the Nerd Dice project. We'll configure and publish the gem, use GitHub Actions to trigger builds and tests, and create magic methods with Ruby metaprogramming that can roll any number of dice, all while using a test-driven approach. Go to statelesscode.com slash nerddicegem to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.